Hey, Bueller Rules here, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. So, um, we got the letter of resignation from Edward's office, and now we need to go back to, um, well, to Criminal Affairs to talk to, um, Gumshoe, but apparently there's something here first. Excuse me? Oh, hello. Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Uh, no thanks. Miss Star, I guess she's out of lunches. I guess so. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like the first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. No, oh, God. Still, I never thought you'd go digging up that case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from that case was due for transferal. This can't all be attributed to mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? You know, that little scene I happened to witness? The, in the instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savored when eaten. Miss Star's hatred towards Lana. It all dates back to two years ago. Yeah, it does. I guess we'll talk to her for a little bit. Dark investigation. Joe Dark. That's a name I'll not soon forget. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. Poor old Jake Marshall, though, must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Her? Lana Sky, My sister? The best of the best were put on that SL9 case. Of course they were led by that legendary duo. Lana and Chief Gant. After case closed. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we were so shocked over how it turned out. You mean, with the forging of the evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. But still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found would suddenly appear, while other items were kept secret. But you didn't have proof of any anything illegal was done. I have proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us saved Gutman were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used? Hmm. That's an interesting take on it. Demon Gant and Lana Sky. Two years ago, Gant was chief detective and Lana second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Demon Gant's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that, I mean his ability to attract evidence. He produced the most incredible evidence in the cases he handled. Incredible evidence? You mean... Oh yes, there were rumors about him even back then. No one dared confront him though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence. Back then, everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Really? Oh yes, myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooked and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she'd lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would have ever recovered from, sh from his shock. The 
that's what makes it all the more infuriating. Miss Star. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Hmm. But you think she was being used. Lana transferred to the prosecutor to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief. That's right. Having solved the SL9 case of position as Chief was secured. There was only one thing left for him to control, and then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. What? You mean, that's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But how could he control Lana? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change. At last, I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, Ricky. It takes more than just ingredients to create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I've been. Oh, you're back. You're still here? I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Doing copy, copying files. I'm turning into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Oh, that DJ. <laughs> I gotta admire your persistency. The, my, I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer's still no. Hmm? I'm not letting you in the chief's office, period. It'd be my neck on the line. That office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. There's gotta be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. Oh, and I definitely have that. Take a look at this. What's this crumbled up piece of paper? No way! Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious! Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they've pushed him this far. Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. At first I thought he was just as cold I he was as cold as ice, but now I know different. He trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence. But we just we betrayed him. Detective That's it. I made up my mind. But here, take my ID card. Thank you. We can't do that if someone found out. They wouldn't let you off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. What? So at least let me do this, for Mr. Edgeworth's sake. Alright, Detective. Thank you. Don't shoes ID tucked swiftly into your pocket. Okay, great. So now we can go to the chief's office. Here we go. Let's hope we turn up something that, that we can use. Here goes, Mr. Wright. So I do think the system is weird. Why would any detective be able to open this office? Oh, because... Because Lana was a detective when she worked in this office, so they probably just made it convenient for any detective's ID to open it and never changed it. Open Sesame. If anyone finds us now... Detective Gunshoe's a goner. If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me out. What? Eek! Gah! <laughs> Emma. Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. Again. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Ah, Detective Gumshoe. What are you doing sneaking up on us like that? I... I wasn't sneaking. I was just worried something might go wrong. So I came too. If you're here, then what's the point in giving us your ID card? 
crumpled 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 gumshoe's ID card in pocket. <laughs> hey, don't do that to my card. Too late. I hardly ever get a chance to come in here, so I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. You really do want to get fired, don't you? Not if we're um, not if we're lucky. Now come on, let's see what we can find out. I've got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, but we might as well make the most of it. Do we have any talking points with you? Oh, we do. Uh, I guess we can talk to you first. That desk on the other side of the room. Was that your sister's? Yes, that's where I was waiting for Lana. Why is it still here? Like, he owns his office by himself now, so why does he still have her desk in here? On that day, two years ago. Is anyone using it now? No, sir. This is entirely Chief Gant's office now. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. Oh, I see. Well, that's about to bite him in the butt. That's a strange reason to leave it there. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us so himself at our New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty intoxicated at the time. I see. So, ever since Lana left, no one's ever touched that desk? No one except Chief Gant, and the cleaning lady who was in here each morning. Still, two years have passed since that incident. There can't possibly be any clues remaining. Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came here to look around, right? Because it's one of the SL9 crime scenes? I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, isn't it? Why do you ask? You don't think... Nah, you would be... No. No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay, now then let's look around a bit more. Hey, hold on. Not so fast, buddy. Huh? What is it? Someone tells you don't worry about it, it's supposed to start bothering you, pal. You don't just let go at that. I'm sorry, this guy's starting to get on my nerves. Okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think Chief Gant might be a suspect, do you? What? Yeah, Mr. Wright, what do we think of him? Chief Gant, so it's finally come to this. What do I think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings. Yet. There he goes, ignoring me again. <laughs> Sorry about that, but um, let's go ahead and examine the room, shall we? Um, first thing source in the world. This is the real deal, isn't it? This armor and these weapons? It sure is, pal. The chief doesn't care for imitations. So he has a real suit of armor with real weaponry with it? First the pipe organ, now this armor? Do you know how many taxpayer dollars must have gone into this room? But I didn't even think about that. What? You mean we're paying for this? That's it. I'm not paying one cent of my taxes. Uh, you, you don't have any taxes to pay yet. Shh, be careful what you say. Who knows, the chief may be hiding in this armor as we speak. I don't think he'd fit in there. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. Cut it out! You guys don't see how scary that guy can be. Hmm, safe. This is a safe, isn't it? Safe? My word is ripe with intrigue. Uh, okay, if you say so. It looks like a code needs to be entered in this panel to open it. Hmm. A seven-digit number. I think I might know what it is. Input number. Yes, let's do it. Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know. You want to try my birth date? It's... No. You don't want to try your stupid birth date. I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. Okay, input code. Okay, I am actually controlling the second. 777777. Because of course he would use his ID number as his safe combo. Code confirmed. Access granted. Bingo. What number did you enter? 
Whose birthday was that, pal? 777777. The final ID card number on that record. What? The number of the mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. You mean... 777777777? That ID number? I think you're one seven shy this time. Okay, whatever. I can't read it when it's grouped together like that. This only mean one thing. That's Chief Gant's ID number. Say, anyone care to look inside? Uh, sure. Let's see what's inside the safe. Is there any money in there? How much does he have stashed away? Look, it's a, uh... A shard from a broken cup. This somehow looks familiar. Where have I seen this before? There's something else in here, too. What's this? Looks like a piece of leather cloth. It has a handprint on it. This is a handprint, isn't it? Hey, I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. You think the chief made up the design? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, well, it was just a thought. Is that it? Is that all there was in the safe? Apparently so. It's empty now. A piece, a piece of cloth with a handprint on it, and a broken shard from a cup. They look like pieces of evidence. But unless you can prove they have something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. Alright, now I have to prove their relevancy to get them. How are these two items related to the SO9 incident? Come on! There's got to be something we can show the detective. Uh, yes, there is. Because that's not a shard from the cup, it's from the vase we put together, or whatever this thing is. Unstable jar? I'm, it looks like a vase to me. Detective Gumshoe, could you have another look at this jar? All of us put that, put that back together. Oh, those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. Wasn't this jar a piece of evidence from that case? That's right. One of the shards had an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, that fragment we just found? You mean this one that was in the safe? Yes, that one. That was in the safe. Now that you mention it, it's ringing a lot of bells. Let's see if it fits. Assemble the fragments. Here, let me see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, pal. Show us what a rookie can do. Mr. Wright, here's some glue. But I can piece this together again. It will prove Chief Gant was knowingly, hi knowingly hiding evidence. Wait, I have to put the whole thing back together? Here goes. Don't make me put the whole thing back together. Okay, thank God. Okay. There we go. I would have felt very foolish if it took me more than one try to get that. There, it fits like a charm. That, of course, means... Chief Gant willingly and knowingly hid a piece of this jar in his safe. In other words, he concealed the piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. But... Hey, guys, get a load of this. What is it? This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. What do you mean? Oh. There's a reddish line on it! A reddish line? That's blood. I don't get it. Why would Chief Dan hide this in his safe? Hmm. Don't know, but we'll find out. Actually, hmm. Let's just examine the rest of the room first. I'll come back to that. Um. I guess we can examine his desk. Wow! Look at the size of Chief Gant's desk! Speaking of that, when we were here earlier... Oh yeah, he stuffed something in his desk. Oh, it's you two! Chief Gant! He put that paper he was reading in his desk. I wonder what he was reading. This looks like a list of evidence used in a case. A list of evidence? In most cases, the list list runs twice as long as this. Hey, look at the case name! Huh? SO9 incident? I wonder what this is doing here. Hold on. Hold on, detective. Did you- what did you just say? I said I wonder what- No, about evidence lists. Normally, they're twice as long? We've heard that before, haven't we? That's right. I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. A half-sized list of evidence. 
Current list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. What would the other half of the list be doing here? I knew it! The chief must be hiding something about that case! It would appear so. Evidence list, so we need to go give that to Edgeworth or show it to him at some point. Look at that giant window. Does he want to crash through it and jump outside? No, he doesn't. Uh, this is the 15th floor? Wow, okay, I didn't realize the building was that tall. I know, I was just saying. Saying what? Ever since making detective, I've always dreamed about doing something like that. You'd probably injure yourself, or kill yourself. Note to self, Detective Gumshoe has a lot of dreams. <laughs> so long as he doesn't go crashing through that window when he gets fired. Don't say that! Let's, uh... Present the fingerprinting kit to you so that we can use it on that piece of cloth. Detective Gumshoe, I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is. So you want to take some fingerprints? It's a great idea, Detective. Alright, go to town, sheesh. Gumshoe? What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints. Um, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Huh? Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. He's not joking, he's just, uh, that blockheaded. I'm talking about that cloth we found in the safe. Oh, <laughs> I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Jeez, where's your sense of humor? Okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for prints. Bring a little powder on the cloth. Then once they've been absorbed into the print, blow the rest away. What are you, my mom? I don't have to be told a million times. Alright, let's get this over with. Okay, here we go. Um, which print to examine? I guess... We can do this one. It seems to be the one that's uh, most visible. So we'll spread it everywhere. Okay, I think that's good enough. Hmm. So whose fingerprint is this? No, it's not yours. You already know it's not yours. I don't know why, just like the gem. We already know what his fingerprint looks like, and it's not that. Nope. Oh! Wait. Is this Emma's fingerprint? What? No. How can this be? What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found a match? Whose fingerprints were they? Huh? Oh, um, it seems the prints are too old. No, they aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be Dark's prints. Do we even have Dark's prints? Psst, hey, you, over here. Hmm? What's going on here? What are the kids' prints doing inside that? Inside the chief's safe. Don't ask me. Let's just keep this information from Emma for now. Here, maybe you should hold on to this. Strip of cloth folded and added to the court record. Well, was I any help? Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. Now, that's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Oh. Isn't that right, you and the coat? <laughs> You're cheap, Gant. We didn't think you'd be back so soon. Unfortunately, I'm a man who believes in science. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run right into a pole. Just then, I thought of a certain detective. Uh, do you mean me, sir? Well then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, you in the coat? Me, sir? Drop off your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. But, but sir... Now get out. 
Y yes, sir. We'll be on our way out too, then. Wait, you, the one without the spiky hair. Don't go just yet. Me, sir? I look a word with you. But, sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You with the spiky hair, you're free to go. Mr. Wright! I don't feel comfortable leaving her in the room with him. Look, pal, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office, I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. It's hard to believe anyone could keep quiet about it all this time. Anyway, you listening to me? I'm gonna try to smooth things over with the Chief again. Later, pal. Later. After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police want to ask her some questions. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. Oh, wow. Well, we'll talk to Lana in the next episode. If you guys enjoyed this one, give this video a like. Also, be sure to like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter, as well as support my Patreon, and check out my reaction channel. All those links will be in the description below. And subscribe for more, and if you are subscribed or any subscribe right now, be sure to hit that bell icon so you can notify when I upload videos. This is Viola Rules, signing off. Talk to you later.